What's going on, everyone? Thanks for tuning in to Just Another Failure Podcast. We got a couple sponsors to shout out before the episode, people that support us, people that you might have seen on the show. If you guys want to not get hooked up on products, go ahead and skip to about three and a half minutes and you'll get into our episode. But if you guys are rad and want to support rad products, stay tuned because we're going to hook you guys up with some rad promo codes and tell you some companies that support us. First off, we have Muertos Coffee. They are out of Winters, California. They are firefighter owned and operated and use promo code. Uh, let's see, what do we have over there? Just another failure, and you're going to get 20% off, plus 5% of all proceeds are going to go back to our first responders and our frontline workers out there on the line. Also hit up Heatwave Visual. They will have your eyes protected. they got gear. they got sweatshirts. Best in the business. Use promo code FAIL for 10% off. You're going to be stoked. They are the most comfortable sunglasses. they got the best rating out there with their lenses. Also, if you like our flags in the background, check out um, 30 Seconds Out out of uh, Sun Valley, Idaho. They are <clears throat> veteran owned and operated, and they got rad gear out there. But what else do we got with these guys? Um, we also got our boys over at uh, Rockwell, which is, I mean, if you're looking for an athletic watch, if you're looking to just be looking sick with a nice watch, go hit up rockwelltime.com and uh, use use failure 20 at checkout for 20 percent off they got everything though too like they're not got, just watches they're moto goggles they got everything crossfit gear i'm just saying supplements i'm just saying like that's their main thing is watches but these guys got shirts they got proteins they got all sorts of stuff so go to uh rockwell time go check out what they got on their website everything these guys do is honestly amazing use failure 20 for 20 percent off your order and then uh, we also got our boys over at Canna Dips. Yeah, exactly. Slap it up. So uh, pack me a lipper here, real so quick. So these are these are CBD pouches. It's a chewing tobacco alternative. So completely tobacco free. All natural uh, products are used in in the making of it. So these things are sick, and obviously CBD infused. So they help. I mean, if you get sore like we do from working out helps with that if you got like that anxiety and need to get a little calm down these guys will help you out um out they of got, humboldt california so yeah, they are in the green triangle they're in the they're in the heart of humboldt so um but these guys got all sorts of insane flavors too so good and uh if you go to their website candidips.com use fail 20 at checkout and get 20 percent off of your order as well so go get some of those and last but not least, you can support us by tuning in to Anchor.fm. You can support us for just a dollar a month or head over to our website, www.justanothertfailure.com. Check it out. Grab a t-shirt. You guys can support us if you like what you see. Don't forget to follow us, subscribe to us, check us out. Otherwise, enjoy the episodes. Enjoy, guys. What up? All right, here we go. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> Came in way too hot. Way too hot. What? Oh my god. Please tell me you're okay. <laughs> what is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Just Another Failure Podcast. And uh, this is kind of a different episode for a little while because we haven't done this in we haven't done we haven't done you and I in seven months a while man yeah it's been a minute but uh, I don't even know when our last episode was of just you and I it had to be last summer I, yeah it's been it's been a while we've we've had guests for quite some time and but um, as you guys know, I'm Devin. That's my buddy Matt over there. And people just don't like us anymore. So you guys are just gonna get a lot of us. We're used to introducing people, but we have to introduce ourselves again, which is kind of weird. But um, gotta roll with the punches. Sometimes. Hey, welcome back. You hey, know? welcome back. How's it going, buddy? Good to see you, pal. <laughs> hey, I haven't even seen you in two weeks. Yeah, legitimately though, we haven't even like. I haven't even really talked yeah, to you. Yeah, I haven't really in, like, talked two. to you in like two weeks because you've been cool guy and me super hard. We're really not even friends anymore, and this yeah. is just a whole show that you guys see. Like we basically just put up with each other now. Yeah, at this we point. hate each other, and we do this just to put it out, and then basically go back to not talking to each other. Yeah, no. As soon as we turn the camera off, hate each other. Literally, don't even have his phone number anymore. 
<laughs> deleted it. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> About time. Finally. Holy shit. I don't have to deal with but, it anymore. Yeah. I mean, we actually have some fun stuff to talk about. Dude, I've been I've been busy. You've been busy. Uh, Abnormally busy. Yeah. Which is kind of actually why this episode is happening because we didn't have time to get guests scheduled around your schedule. So we're putting out our own episode, which is kind of cool. We're going back to the roots. Stuff we've talked about for a while. Like, we just haven't really been able to, like, kind of talk about how we started the podcast in general. Like, the, all that. We've just more been interviewing people, having a good time. And well, I think we, we don't talked really... about how we started it, but we definitely haven't, like... No, well, not the how we started, but more the roots of, like, what we started as. Yeah, 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 yeah. You yeah, know, yeah, just yeah, kind of yeah, having yeah, yeah, fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. We really just been having fun with people. We've had a lot of great guests this last couple months. Sweet a lot of guests. really fun people, and we wouldn't be here, you know, probably this far along if we didn't have these guests coming on because <laughs> they motivated us to do a lot of episodes. True. But uh, one, this all started in COVID. We didn't think. I mean, we're a year, guys. We're a year now into the 15 day to ease this. Yeah. Ease this up, right? And now we're a year, but. We're finally starting to open again, and that's hence why I've been busy. Like, this started in COVID because we had a lot of time on our hands. And, like, the last month, like, I went to Florida. I flew. I uh, went down to St. Martin, had a trip. I came back, went to training for my new job. Maybe we'll talk about that in a little bit. I, I mean, at this point, you can talk about that, right? Yeah, I just I, don't know, I, I haven't really. I mean, it. we might as well, like. We haven't. Really, You're already repping it, dude. Yeah, Come on, like I mean, Jesus. Yeah, so I, I I have a new job in aviation and a, a job that I'm. <laughs> just that, tell them what you do. Shut up. I'll get there. It's a job that I've been trying to get for a long time. Ever since I started flying, and ever since I really became a pilot, there's two big jobs that I really wanted in aviation. One of them was a crop duster. I thought crop dusting was one of the coolest jobs you could have in aviation. Low level flying, you've agriculture. Been, you've been crop dusting me for re- for years. I just did it in a different way, right? Yeah. You know, just Shit get that bubble right gut, right? So crop dusting was always a goal, and then um, firefighting always had a peak in my uh, in my life. Uh, when I was in high school, I was a fire explorer. Uh, with a local fire department in the Bay Area, I really thought fire would be a cool career, and it was either fire or flying, two F jobs, right? And so, uh, wow. <laughs> but anyways, aerial firefighting has always spiked my interest. I've always wanted to be an aerial firefighter, eventually get into tankers and be the guy that drops on the fire. So I did get hired with a company. I'm now flying air attack this year for the 2021 Ooh. season flying air attack. I love how cool they make that position sound. It's a cool position. I'm not saying it's not cool. Just the name that they give it like, yeah, what's up? I'm a aerial attack pilot. Oh, dude, what do you do? Um, attack fire. <laughs> Freaking attack so much fire, dude. <laughs> attack a lot of fire. So dope, dude. So the company I'm with is really cool. We do aerial reconnaissance of the fire. So we do uh, we give recon of what's going on, and we can do live streaming with the cameras that we have on our That's aircraft. That's a streamer now. Yeah, so we can, do, we can do live streaming to the ground, give them high definition, high quality video imagery and uh infrared imagery of what the fire is doing how it's building on top of that we have an air attack platform so basically your job is to go film the fire and tell them yep there is in fact a fire here that's one of the facets that our company can do (laughs) yes yes there is a fire here if you couldn't see the smoke and you couldn't see the flames here's my hd video here's my my hd video that we're flying over that there is in fact a full on fire right here guys there is and so the air attack side good um, job matt we usually have a a chief or a battalion chief from the forestry service or cal fire on board the aircraft and what air attack does is we're the ones orbiting above the fire for a couple hours we're more or less the eye in the sky oh we're working with ground crew you are just pulling out all the stops to make yourself sound fucking so cool huh oh, that's cool hey big humble brag right now this guy Hey, it's a cool job, and uh, hey. I'm stoked. It's a it's a very uh, unique brotherhood of pilots that are in the forestry side, and especially in the flying side of flying. And so it's taken me a long time, and I finally broke in. So at least I'm starting with the air attack platform. I have a really cool company that's backing me. So I've been up in Northern California in the mountains lately for the last two weeks training, um, getting ready to start the season this year for the 2021 fire season. So that's what I've been doing. But then on top of that... You know, we didn't get to fly a lot last year. Uh, we Wait, didn't have a. I also have one more question. 
How many beef sticks did you consume in these in this two week period? Oh man, dude, I gained some weight, dude. Like Yeah, but like you told me about the pizza, but how many beef sticks did you eat? Because all you do anytime we go near a gas station beef is beef sticks. Straight to the beef sticks. Beef dude. And then as soon as you come to my house too, we have string cheese Jeez. and you <laughs> annihilate string cheese. You just love the tubular shape of things, I think. No. That made that sound wow. really weird. Wait. Wow. <laughs> not, not what I meant. This or, is really awkward right hey, now. This is. Not, I don't like tubular shaped objects. Not what I meant, but you like the beef stick and the string stick. Yeah. Oddly enough, I haven't had a beef stick while I was up there. It's really weird. I know. No. I need some beef sticks. I don't believe it. I need it. some pepper sticks, man. I don't believe it. I haven't really been driving. I that, don't that's a road it. trip food, man. Ride. Beef sticks and coffee. That's road trip food right there. Dude, all your Mr. Beef Stick. Oh, I'm going to have to figure something out for fire season, what to eat in the airplane. We'll be orbiting for like three hours on fire sometimes. So you are going to be crushing beef, beef sticks. Beef jerky. I th- dude, I think, I'll, I think we need like a, what is it, Bill Tog? Bit, Bill, uh, Bill, Bit, Bill Tongue, I think it's called. Bill Tongue? That stuff's a bomb. I think I need that. We need that for a sponsorship. Yeah. Hit them up. Hit up Boikies. Boikies. But yeah, I'm pretty pumped. Um, it should be a fun year. I'm, I'm very excited to get into this part of flying. Um, but during COVID, we couldn't fly. The aircrafts that I fly, we couldn't fly because it's mainly international. The world's starting to open back up as we've seen clearly today in Southern California. What did we call Huntington Beach? It's the Democratic Republic state of Huntington Beach now? Dude, yeah, so we have to drive through Huntington Beach to get to the uh, studio location here that we're in. Um, Dude, it looked like a typical summer day. I mean, I will say this is like the first nice weekend we've had in a little while. But, dude, there was mayhem down there. There was a ton of people. We saw a dude riding a Harley down the street with no helmet like he was f- fucking from Florida or something. Literally, like, dude on Harley. I was in Florida three weeks ago. Like, it felt like we were in Florida, like, driving down dude. PCH through Huntington Beach. Like, mayhem. It was insanity. And then we get to our studio location, which, wow, well, location. What was your other um, word? Like, simulator? Yeah, <laughs> simulator. <laughs> I don't know why. I can't speak ever. But uh, we're not really going to say where the studio is exactly. But now that everything's open back up, our parking situation here is horrible. It's we, a high tourist area. We, we, we had to walk a quarter mile just to get here. Yeah. which actually, Not over-exaggerating either. <laughs> that, it was probably over a quarter mile. <laughs> Dude, we, we parked far today. We're in, we're in BFE. So if, apparently, you know what that stands for. That's far. BFE, yeah. yeah, yeah. So the world coming back open, I got a trip popping up that I'm going to Europe tomorrow for a week. This was all completely normal prior to COVID. And I haven't done this for like a year where Mm -hmm. phone rings and we just launch international. I haven't done it. So yeah, I'm still have my corporate flying stuff. I'll be doing that outside of fire season Um, In fire season. I'll be doing that. But so that's part of the reason we don't have a guest because I'm just leaving again for a week and then i come home for a day and then i leave again for another week yeah so, you're making it you're making it pretty difficult dude but it's we're gonna annoying, still pump, we're gonna still pump episodes if we have wherever we can do this we're gonna still pump an episode the episodes are gonna continue to come out whether they have a guest or, cool if they don't sorry you're gonna have to listen to us talk about random shit that's going on in the world but hey we kind of have a funny view on some of it sometimes and it's gonna give you guys a break from just all the chaos like we're just gonna have fun and joke about so because Literally, apparently, in the last two weeks, I mean, we could always love the internet because the internet just makes the world go on fire Bro, and it internet. entertains Speaking us. Speaking of being on fire, the internet is on fire right now because of all the cool shit that's been going on in the world. And I say cool shit being hilarious. I mean, I'm even going to call these fails because I got a couple of these that we need to talk about. What fail do you want? I have a good one, but what, what one I, do you want to start? Let's start with the big one. Okay. Let's that's start, the one I was going to start let's with. Let's start with what the hell is going on in the Suez Canal right now because if you guys haven't seen this and you guys there's don't, no way you haven't seen this yeah and if you guys don't know where the Suez Canal is it's the cow cow wow it's the what the canal there it is there we go that runs between Egypt and Saudi uh Egypt and Israel that takes you into the Mediterranean out of the Dead Sea and which the, is a major trade route for a lot of people hundreds of thousands of ship this made it so you don't have to go around the horn of africa which one is incredibly dangerous to even go around there right we've seen captain phillips we know what happens off the horn of africa hey. somalia ethiopia i am the captain now look at me so we have a lot of that and I then it just captain. it adds 
months to a trip to go around Africa because Africa is not a small continent just to get back up into the Med. So they basically dug this big trench through uh, the middle of Egypt and were like, hey, we're just going to cut right through here and make everybody's lives easier. No, it's not Israel. Saudi Arabia. I'm retarded. It's Saudi and Egypt. You can't say that, Matt. What? The R word. Egypt? <laughs> <laughs> So this ship has gone in there, and he has decided to plank. But hold on. This is a... <laughs> He's throwing up a plank right now. This is a 224-ton vessel. Cargo ship. And it is approximately the size of the Empire State Building, and this dumbass managed <laughs> to wedge this thing in the canal, touching both sides, so nobody can get through. He's literally fucked up everybody's day to the point where i mean there's they still haven't gotten it out it's no. still stuck in there they've been digging away at the front of the boat with a <laughs> by the way with a tractor to try one. and free yeah one, one tractor one excavator and this is such an issue how do you not have like nine tractors just moving as much dirt as possible to try and get this dumbass's ship turned around? <laughs> look at this we have a tonka toy uh, excavator just digging this out Dude. one <laughs> but look, look how much dirt they're going to have to move look just to get this thing. That, oh, and then they've had the tugboats. They've had like 10 tugboats getting on one side of this thing. Yeah. But basically, people cannot get through the canal right now because this, this captain. Guy, this guy has gone and Austin Powers this boat <laughs> in the middle of a fucking canal. And now these. Now Someone everyone's, didn't give him the memo that there's no U turns in the canal. Now everyone's just sitting there honking at him, yelling at him, asking him why he's such an idiot. And this poor guy has to just sit. On this boat. So I think I know how this happened. But In shame. I think I know how this happened. But let's think of all the funny reasons why this could have happened instead of the real reason. Because the truth is never fun on the internet anymore. So, like, do you think they're, like, halfway through this canal and, like, someone was like, bro, left my cell phone at the hotel. Where at? <laughs> France. <sighs> Damn it. Mike, are you serious? No, well, okay. So Flip let's, it around. Let's Flip actually, it around. Let's actually say, though, that, I mean... This is what the guy's claiming. I mean, we don't know if this is actually true, but they're saying they got caught in 40 knot winds in a sta in a sandstorm. It very well could happen. It, it could happen. Especially there, it in could, that part of the world. It could. Or this dude was hammered, and he was like, you want to see if I can drift this ship? <laughs> you know what I mean? Let's do some ship drifting. Yeah, he's like, you want to see if I can grind both sides of the fucking canal here? Or do you think it was like, did I turn the stove off when I left the house today? <laughs> Hold on, let me spin it around. Oh, oh damn it! <laughs> or what's the other one? Like, uh, like wife text, you know, and said like he's coming through the canal and his wife's at the other end. Like, what did you buy on Amazon? Oh, back it up, back shit, it up. Shit, shit, shit. <laughs> yeah, but I, honey, what's this box, <laughs> dude? How many? I forget what it says. It says like, was it like a hundred fifty thousand people go through the canal or something yeah. daily? And this guy has gone. <laughs> And stopped and everything. Ruin that. Okay, so on top of that, they're thinking of ways to get this thing out of there right now. So one of the re one of the ideas is deloading the ship somehow, and taking some of the cargo off this thing to lighten it up, to, so it could it's not as deep in the water. But bro, eighteen thousand five hundred vessels usually travel down this canal. <laughs> And you have one idiot in the we thought we thought the four oh five traffic was bad. We thought the four oh five was brutal. This homie. And this guy has gone and stopped all eighteen thousand five hundred so, of those. So if people. you guys have an Amazon package that's on a delay, we, we might know what ship it's on. But this is how crazy these ships are. No, Amazon's sending a fucking Drone. scuba team that's gonna go in, <laughs> infiltrate everything that they have on the ship, take it out, still get it to you, one day package. You're welcome. Amazon, we need a sponsorship. How are you? This is like a FedEx thing, huh? <laughs> two to, this is for sure FedEx. Two to three business yeah. years. Uh, we'll see you next month, maybe. But the weight and balance on these things, like the loading, they said it's like so like on the fringe where if they unload it wrong, it will capsize. Really? It is that like top oh, it's heavy. That f it's like they, they load these ships that close to it that like if they unload this possibly wrong it could flip over hey so maybe that's actually what happened was like some sh some stuff like shifted and it was like oh 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 and the guy started correcting it and it was like oh 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 back the other way until he just pinballed off both sides and then just jammed the thing in there until it was good and stuck and then he was like fuck it was like devin's first time driving in the ice just like oh no correct 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 other way other way other way oh nope nope that way oh oh man but so, so yeah. How you, many days has this thing been stuck? Three, I think, right? Three full days. I think this is three. Today's three. 
So three full days. I learned about it on the internet roughly two days ago. So yeah, I don't. I, I, that's how I, I base when, when it actually. That's happened. how I base when stuff happens in my life is when I saw it on social media. <laughs> so if it happened on social media, uh, you're. That's when it happened. Yeah. So what day did this? But I mean, it's a it's hysterical because why use the modern way and go all the way through the canal when we can go traditional and just go down around South America, South Africa and come home. Well, that's going to be, you know, a pain in the ass to go that far because we made this cool <laughs> canal that this asshole decided to mess up. Hey, hey, Cap, what's the what's the fuel burn <laughs> if we got to go around the, the southern part? Do we have enough? Oh, Ooh. put that one in. Wait, so it's been three days. Two, I think. I think today's day three. Today's okay, day so three. If, if if today is day three that this is happening, fifty five thousand ships are just sitting at bay on both sides of this canal. <laughs> have not been able to go through there. Oh, fifty five thousand five hundred ships are are lacking their wonderful trade route that they get to do. Can you just imagine if you're like that one guy? And you have like something really important to do in life, and you're like, "Don't worry, I'm gonna be there tomorrow afternoon." You're like, oh. "Yeah, mm. <laughs> like that one guy that's like he's been out at sea for a while, and then he's like, oh, you know what? I just get to uh, hit the hit the Suez Canal, and and I'm home free." <laughs> and then this guy showed up, and you're like, "Fuck, I'm gonna be late for dinner." Tonight. Yeah. So uh, what had happened was this jackass happened to jackknife <laughs> jackknife a massive ship in this canal. Um, yeah, that's pretty gnarly. It's weird because it's almost straight, right? Like, it's only, like, at a – it's less than a 45-degree angle that this thing's at that they can't just push the nose on. Like, that's – it's, like, buried well, in the mud. Yeah, the I know. You saw the <laughs> – you saw the dip. He slammed the thing. Man. Have they come out and said, like, how he crashed the ship? Has anybody come up with that? We can make up a story and let's see if we can get it to go viral. I mean, I know they're saying that, like, supposedly he got caught in the winds, but is that, like, confirmed that that actually happened? I think that's what they're speculating is it was a windstorm happen. <laughs> Rookie. Yeah. This remember, was his first I remember ship my, job. Remember my first time driving a ship the size of the Empire State Building? Nerd. Dork. Could you imagine just being... <laughs> Dude. <laughs> hey, that guy has to live with that the rest of his life, too. Like, Hey, weren't you the captain that hey, got the... Yeah. Hey, weren't you that guy? <laughs> no. Dude, it was one time. No, no. People don't forget. That wasn't me. No, I saw you on the news. You're that guy. No, 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 no. You were on the Evergreen one? Mm -mm. How hammered were you? <laughs> Seven. Seven. Good for you. I mean, maybe, like, maybe we don't know. Maybe there was, like, a piracy act. And maybe, like, Jack Sparrow's on board, and he just, you know, he was kind of an early pirate in his early days, sunk a couple ships, and maybe he's just... <laughs> But you have heard of me. But you have heard. <laughs> you are by far the worst cargo captain I have ever heard of. But you have but heard of heard me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. So I wonder how long they're uh, going to be stuck in until they get this poor guy free. I wonder what, like, rights they're on. Like, hey, are, are, they, are they living, like, on Egypt law? Or, like, who's, like, supporting him? Egypt's like, I got you guys. Saudi Arabia's like, no, you can have him. Like, I, I don't want this guy. <laughs> Wait. Just thinking about this, when they do get this guy free, he's got to continue on his uh, his route down the canal there. And then he gets out into the open ocean where all these boats are anchored offshore waiting to go through this. This guy has to go by all of those people. Walk of shame. Bro, he has a full walk of shit, a full ship of shame. Oh, could you imagine? Just don't look anyone know. Oh my God, this poor guy is just going to be getting roasted you, you from people, all those dudes. You think people will moon him? I, dude, <laughs> yeah, he's probably getting worse than a moon. He's I mean, getting a helicopter, I guarantee. Would you launch water balloons at him? <laughs> dude, they're going to, like, people are going to, like, you know the ships are going to have, like, their speakers and be like, oh, nice job, idiot. <laughs> I remember my first time driving a ship, you jackass. I wonder how, like, the radio frequencies are just going right now. Just all the ships just out there at bay. Just that guy like... just has to turn off all this <laughs> shit because he's just getting yelled at the whole time. Did you move it yet, moron? No? Hurry the fuck up. I'm late. <laughs> the fuck out of my way, you jackass. Is Jim driving? Jim was driving, huh? <laughs> You'll never get through that canal, you jackass. jackass. <laughs> <laughs> it was bring your kid to work day today. <laughs> Let Timmy drive the ship one time, and look what happens. <laughs> Dad, look what I can do. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. Poor guy. Man. You uh, got to love people's fails, though. I mean, when dude, people just, just... You know, 
with a name like we have for this podcast, it is wonderful to just see all the failure that goes on on this planet, you and think, we think, love it. You think we can give this guy a guest? <laughs> yeah, let's hit him up. Let's find out who he is. <laughs> yeah, can you tell us your biggest failure? Oh, uh, yeah, I was the guy that uh, wedged the ship in the canal. Oh, yeah, you fucked up pretty bad. How was that? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, congratulations, dumbass! You're officially the biggest idiot on the internet right can now. Can you How walk you us? Can you walk us through like a, you know, moment by moment incident? <laughs> At what point were you like, oh, I done messed up? You know, like I've been in the snow before and like get some fun drifts going, and you're like cruising. You're like, you think it was like that? He's like kind of in the wheel. He's like, all right, I got it, I got it. She's a little back heavy. Oh, oh, oh bring it back. Oh, I got it. I got it. Oh, nope, I don't got it anymore. On, on a serious <laughs> though, though, like that had to be kind of gnarly hitting that bank, like. I, so I've seen like you, there's videos on the internet like right when you see like cruise ships hit docks and stuff like that and they mess up like yeah I wonder how violent it is on that's the boat. what I mean like that had to have been kind of gnarly on the boat because how far because the ship has like a big cone on the front of it if you haven't seen the pictures yeah. and that thing is like that looks like it's literally sideways <laughs> oh my god that's a photo of it yeah oh dude that's why didn't they make this thing a little wider also? <laughs> like, why were they like, yeah, how big are these uh, shipping shipping container ships? They just kind of eyeballed it. Like, Let's give them two feet on each side. We're good. He just closed one eye and put his fingers out there. Like, yeah. Eh, yeah that's, that's about right. That's what I mean. Like, how did you not make this a little <laughs> bit bigger? You guys already dug the whole thing. Like, just what's, what's moving a little bit more dirt at this point? Would you want to move a little bit more dirt at that point after you just dug this thing? You're like, no, you guys are good. You're going to tell me they're not thinking about that now or they're like, When oh. was the canal built? When was this? Was this man-made? I don't even know much about the Suez Canal. Oh, you don't? You're not a big shipping guy that travels down the Suez Canal daily? When was it made? 120 miles Suez Canal is a man-made waterway. In 1869, dude, they had wooden clipper ships back then. These guys dug this thing with shovels. Yeah, that was full shovel. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, could you imagine? They didn't think they had 300. They didn't think about 400 foot boats running through this thing. Okay, but now we have modern technology <laughs> and we could f- move dirt in like three seconds okay. and that thing would be wider. Well, there's like ownership rights on the land. There's probably some farmer in Saudi Arabia that's like, you take any more of my land and put. No. I don't know. Oh. I'm just. I, hey, I'm just thinking out loud here. <laughs> Call me crazy, but... They were doing this stuff for pirate ships and Christopher Columbus, all right? Hey, hey, call me crazy, but maybe they should just make the canal a little wider. Christopher Columbus was a little earlier than 1869. (laughs) But they were doing wood ships back then. I mean, the Titanic was like the world's biggest ship at this point. How did did that one turn out? Oh. Too soon? Remember they were supposed to redo the Titanic? all of a sudden that's still touchy, huh? (laughs) Jesus. Remember they were supposed to redo the Titanic 2 last year during 2020? Yeah, which also, like, you already know what happened with it. Why would you name it the same thing? It was supposed to take the same route, too. Like, Uh you guys just asking for a problem? Like, that iceberg is going to square up and be like, I beat that other bitch's ass. You think I won't do it to you? COVID ruined the fun. So, like, is that still happening? Because I want to see this. Like. do you? You want to see? You want to see another ship sink? That's dark. Dude, at here. least we'll have high definition video this time. They didn't even have camera phones back then during True, that. You yeah. know every streamer out there that's on the boat drowning is like, yeah. I can't, I can't do it anymore. <laughs> yeah, what's up? We're out here live. This ship is literally sinking right now. Uh, it's pretty dope. Hit me in the comments real quick if you got any questions. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna do a live Q and A later. <laughs> do you think they'll do a little louder iceberg straight ahead this time? Yeah. <laughs> Or maybe they'll just let they'll write it out. They're like, that, is that close? Uh, is that one? No. Wait, wait, wait. Is that the big one that they hit? <laughs> that that big fucking thing? Because That's that, what they hit last that time? iceberg's still floating out there. The same one that took down the other. <laughs> it probably is. Like, let's be honest. The thing's just flexing out in the ocean, yeah. just sitting there. He's like, yeah, he's like the dope iceberg. When the other icebergs walk by, they're like, oh, shit. That guy took out a whole ship, bro. Hey, he snapped that boat in half. That's the Titanic iceberg right there. Yeah. That's that's Gigantica. Yeah, like he's got tattoos and stuff. Like, you know what I mean? Like he's that badass iceberg. There's pieces of the Titanic just sticking out of it still. Yeah. He's just like, you want to see what I've been through? No, mm. Mr. Iceberg, we know you're cool. You got to love when we do episodes. because Yeah, are... what the fuck are we talking about right now? <laughs> Jesus. God, we go on tangents. I'm so sorry. Dude, I just love that the internet... There's been so many things in the last week. There's some that we'll, we won't go into. They're a little too political, but I, I love them. But the, this new one today, I mean, we're canceling Dr. Seuss. Um, that's just absolutely asinine in my head that Dr. Seuss is now offensive. Mr. Potato Head is now offensive, but... 
but it's not called that anymore, Matt. Yeah, but no, it is in my head. But <laughs> in my head. But it's okay that we can now release Satan shoes, bro. And these shoes, have you seen them? These too? shoes have human blood in them. Okay, but first off, it's sixty cc's of ink and one, one drop, drop of, of human, human blood. blood. Who gave the blood? Him. He did it. Yeah. It's his blood. That's what I read. Confirmed. I'm, I can't confirm anything. Can we confirm? I don't know this. So it's a it's a it's a Lil Nas X. If you guys uh, don't know who that is, it's the that's the got the horses in, in the, the bag. bag, horse doggies and things. <laughs> yeah, we can't sing that. Copyright issues. Got it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we just got canceled. Yeah. Sorry. But this, this guy episode, teams up with Nike to release the most satanic shoes. Okay. Let me let me give you the rundown real quick. You ready? These are Nike Air Max ninety sevens. They contain. 60 cc's of red ink and one drop of human blood. 666 pairs are each individually numbered. So they're obviously pretty one off. They got, uh, what are they called? Um, pentagrams? Yep, on the top. On, on the top and in the insole of the shoe. So you can see pentagrams everywhere. And, you know, for a cool $1,018, you can have a pair of these. And you know what the 1018 is for, right? What that reference? And it's on the shoe, too. What does that mean? I don't so know. So it says Luke 1018 on his shoes. It's a Bible verse that's on the front, on the toe of the shoe. Ah, see, there you go. That's when Satan fell from heaven. Ah, cool. That's, that's a good price. I that, like that. That's the Bible verse that says, I saw Satan fall like lightning wow. from heaven. Wow. That's pretty evil. That's like pretty demonic, evil, messed up stuff right there. Like, I'm just saying, man. Like the. I mean, I'm not a super hugely religious guy, but the fact that like you could sell a shoe with six 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 a pentagram and blood in it, still kind of blows my mind a little bit. Dude, it's just so. Maybe, maybe maybe blows my mind just a tad. It's a bad fallen world we're living in, dude. That is not like we're canceling Dr. Seuss, but this is okay. Like just to put human blood in shoes and call them Satan shoes. Oh yeah, they're okay. So yep, 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 yep. Luke ten eighteen, which yep. references Satan's banishment from heaven. That's gnarly. That's that's like that's yeah. I the shoe is a Nike Air Max, which it's it's like a collab thing too with Mischief. I think is yeah, what mischief, it is. Yeah, Mischief. Yeah. Uh, so it's like obviously to reinvent Lil Nas X's new Montero song and video. <laughs> it's got a Bible scripture, emblemized. In, oh wait, what? And blaze, I don't even know. And basled? Uh, no, I'm not sure what that word is because I read it. at a third grade level. Um, I think it just means basically burned in the side. Uh, a Bible verse, like you're saying, and there's also 666 uh, reference towards the back of the shoe with a number, another with another number in the front of it. Alluding to which limited unit it is. Cool. So you can get the shoe that basically is 6 666. You could be that guy. Did you see the photo, like the press release, how gnarly the photo was? It's Satan sitting behind him, putting it up the butthole on him. <laughs> That's the photo. Dude, this is, and this is okay in public society today. Dr. Seuss is bad, but this is okay. I'm not going to lie, it's an ugly ass shoe. It's just an ugly all together. I mean, dude, that's the press release photo. Look at this. Look how disturbing this is. Oh, okay. It kind of, it kind of reminds me of the uh, little Nikki. No, the devil from uh, Tenacious D. I'm the devil. And then I guess it was like, I did you see his tweet like why he did it? Uh Oh man, let me let me find. What it. what did he? He did it for a reason, like specifically? Yeah. He basically was saying that he has been like ostracized by the community so much because he's an openly gay human. Mm -hmm. And he had too much people saying that he was going to burn to death of his whole life for being gay. And so that's why he did it. I mean, that's kind of fucked up. Like he has to go through that. You know what I mean? Like he even, he even gets that kind of like. I mean, people are messed up. For it, but people like, are messed up in general, just to say the least. Like, people are legit messed right, it's up. Messed up and, you but know, like, like I'm never gonna like people live their life 
how they live it. I'm not going to say what's right or wrong because it's their own choice and that's free will. Like, I'm not going to sit here because I don't believe it, but like, there are messed up people out there that will legit be like, you're going to burn in hell for this today. And it's like, okay, that's not the right approach to take with someone if you don't agree with their opinion on something. Hey, all I'm going to say is Nike's new slogan. Like, they got to be coming up with something pretty cool. Just slay it. <laughs> Nike just <laughs> burn in hell. Just fucking love the devil. <laughs> Nike, hail Satan. <laughs> <laughs> Weren't you guys the like just do it guys? Yeah, now we're, we're hail a little Satan. dark. We're a little dark now. We've fallen off the deep. You know, maybe you guys should. You made one Satan shoe. You can't change your whole vibe to that now. Oh my gosh, what a disaster! And Nike has just fallen under so many controversial oh, you think, topics. You, you think they're gonna get a little flack for this one? Jeez. I mean, they're like I the know. king. They're like the new king of controversy these days. But this, but the thing is, is it's like they're one of those companies that no matter what, people are still going to continue to buy their stuff. Yep. St- still going to do, you know, buy every shoe, piece of clothing that they make, just because it's Nike. Exactly. I mean, what you and do? they can get away with this stuff yeah. too because they're Nike. Because at the end of the day, if you don't like it, don't support them. But there's going to be four hundred things- million people. The worst part is, is there's going to be some kid in Africa in a couple months wearing these things because someone threw them away. I was, I was going to say, I want to see like the turnaround on these things because the guy that does, in fact, get you know one of these 666 pairs, you know he's turning around and selling these things oh, they're all for gonna, like they're quadruple, quadruple the price. Yeah. Like this dude's making 10 grand on these shoes later. It's like the off-white series that Nike does. Yeah, it's like, dude, you're going to – yeah, this guy's – whoever gets these shoes are – you just – It's just a gnarly standpoint to take on a business when – with the, in relativeness of what's going on in the world today and then make a stand like this, like, you're going to piss a lot of people off. Yeah, but they're also going to make a shit ton of money, so yeah. I'm sure they don't care. No, they don't. They just got that, like, I mean, like we gonna... were talking about earlier. They got that fuck you money. They don't care. Yeah, I mean, off of 666 pairs that cost them three pennies to make, like – and they're selling them for over a thousand dollars. So they make six hundred and seven hundred. You know, do the math. Come on now. Go a lot. There we go. That's, Hamster you know, wheel is working. Yeah, Let's six, see it. Seven hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, we'll give it to you. Um. Yeah. So again, do you think they care? Nah. No. They don't care. It's just I'm gonna get a couple hate emails from you know the religious side seven, of people. Is that worth seven hundred thousand dollars of your business? Yeah, because look at the exposure they're getting. We're talking about them. They're all over the internet. <sighs> you know. Yeah, I get it. But dude, just it's like the Takashi Six Nine shit. You hate the guy. <laughs> what is he doing right now? I don't now? know. He's living it up. That beard that he's got is sick. How funny was? But that guy still, you can't get that dumbass's name out of your mouth because he's such an idiot. Speaking of that, there was a funny Takashi Six Nine one that went around not too long ago, and there was like people interviewing to be security guards, and this guy picks up the phone. <laughs> yeah. He's like, he's like, dude, I got this dope position, sick, sick, high profile rapper. All right, I'm in, I'm in, and he's like. It's for Takashi Six Nine. He's like, oh, uh, oh I, I gotta uh, go. Uh, my mom's calling. She just died. I, I gotta go. My mom just died. <laughs> the guy's like, wait, your, your mom's, mom's calling you? She's dead. <laughs> I saw that one too. Yeah, uh, yeah, but same, same thing. I mean, you hate that guy, and he, I mean, I can't even say I hate him because I can't. You can't not appreciate the level of just His marketing, bro. The guy knows how to get a gazillion views on YouTube. Yes, that is an official number, and he, <laughs> I, dude, I just hate the stupidity of it, oh, dude. He's like, so dumb. I just, I legitimately, it makes me cringe. Oh, he's like, literally. It, it makes no. I get it. Like he's well at putting your name, his name in your mouth, but at the end of the day, it's just like it's so cringy. Like he. Oh, it's pathetic. And that's, I guess, that would be like the end of the day of like what I'm talking about here with these shoes and stuff. Like the stuff that's getting the attention and getting the coverage. At and the stuff, end of the day, we're we're the same path- way though. We're pathetic too. So what's the deal? Yeah, but we're at least funny. Maybe. Possibly mediocre at best. But we're still <laughs> but we're still pathetic too. What's up, man? Thanks for listening. We appreciate you. But I mean, just like this the the means that people are going to, 
these days to like get recognition out there or like well you have to do that nowadays you have to do something but that's what what i'm saying this is so ridiculous like the level that people are going to to scream anymore like maybe that's actually why the guy crashed the ship because he was like yo did you hear about these did you hear about these nike shoes yeah it's all over the internet well i want to be famous (laughs) let me crash my ship real quick i'm gonna be all over every news channel ever what's up there was an underlining cause behind him crashing the ship he's bringing awareness it's all actually intertwined together this is all that everybody's working together to do the craziest shit to get the most famous he was actually he was actually bringing on to something dude he was actually bringing awareness to the covid vaccine mm-hmm. that's why the guy crashed the ship because actually that ship was carrying all those containers were all covid vaccines dude. and he wasn't about it so he's causing awareness about this whole situation we can make a cool conspiracy theory out I've of this i've been hanging out with alex too much you know i'm trying i'm reading <laughs> you've been in on that dark web yeah. way too deep lately I've man read, i've been reading too much into conspiracies i guess but so, um, I, I, I don't know. Do you have anything more to say about that? Because I'm ready to move on to my next one. Because no, I just, this one. I thought it was like just legitimately pathetic at the end of the one. day. Oh, yeah. It's stupid and they're ugly shoes. But hey, if you And get I don't some, agree with them. If you get some, let me see them. I think it's absolutely just evil and disgusting. Yeah, you're Can, big. You're big religious guy, so you don't like well, that. It's not even that. It's just, I mean, yeah, my faith is definitely disagreeing with it. But the other stuff that we're making bad that, like, what's good and bad anymore is just absolutely stupid. Put a Nike symbol on it. They'll sell it. They don't care. <laughs> Put Dr. Seuss and Nike. It'll go back. It'll yeah, come back. They'll bring them back. Um, nah, so. <laughs> what do you got? This one, bro. So, you know how we were talking about Aaron Carter recently? Oh, God. We're bringing this back? Bro. We're not bringing this back. We're bringing this up. <laughs> what because I don't know how I didn't hear about this until the other day. We got a new celebrity boxing match coming. With Aaron Carter. With Aaron Carter. Oh, but wait. And not with Logan Paul or Jake Paul. Please don't tell me Logan or Jake Paul. Even better. Justin Bieber. Even better. You couldn't even have thought. Nick Cannon. About. (laughs) No, you can't guess it. You'll never. You you can't guess it. Um, uh, Jessica Simpson. (laughs) That might be even cooler because he's about the same size, maybe. No. Aaron Carter. Aaron Carter's a boxer now. No, he's far from actually. Who is six feet tall has decided he is going to try and beat the shit out of 6'10, 230 pound meth doing Lamar Odom, baby. Shut up. Yeah. Aaron Carter. Aaron Carter is going to try and fight Lamar Odom in June, I believe. No. Yeah. Have you seen Aaron Carter's head tattoo? Like, have you seen his body that he. Dude. Lamar Odom's going to kill him. <laughs> yeah, June 12th, this is happening. Lamar Odom is legitimately going to kill him. He's been he's been training with some MMA fighter for a little bit. <laughs> and he's Aaron quote, Carter has? He's quote-unquote working on his combinations, building some muscle, and getting in some cardio. Wow. And you're going to fight someone who's 10 inches taller than you. No, this seems completely, completely right. But again, this is why I hate this. This new world we live in, the stupidity that you're allowed to do. Alex, well, he, Alex, well, he's broke. He's got to do something. Who? Aaron well, Carter. Well, he he's worth, broke. He's worth four hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, he's dead broke. But like, like, what do you think he's doing it for? This is the legit stuff. Like Alex is like, no, I love it. I love that these guys can go in there and do this. But it's like, you're just disrespecting so many people's professional levels anymore. Like you're not understanding work and ethic and like what it takes to do this. You're just like, Oh, I'm going to go take six MMA classes and call out some professional athlete to go fight him. Like, no, this is like, it was funny when Jason Ellis used to do this at Ellis mania and he would get like Deegan against, uh, who did Deegan fight? Deegan fought, uh, I don't know. I don't remember uh, that. Dave Mira. I mean, unfortunately with Dave where he's at now, but you know, um, I just love the fact that the world has turned into that but cartoon I'll, that used to be on Celebrity Deathmatch. Where they just <laughs> with used the to, clay. Dude, they the used to just figures. pin up the most random pair of celebrities. And that's like legit happening right now, and I'm living for it, bro. I love it. Because I can't wait to see 6'10", dude. Abs- like, he doesn't even have to move, dude. He can just hold his arm out and Aaron Carter. <laughs> just going to run into his fist. He can't even come near the dude's body. And you know what? There is no better comeback story for old Lamar than to hop in the ring and beat the <laughs> shit out of a little white kid. You know what I mean? I, I can't wait. It's going to be – if this actually does happen, it's going to be fantastic. 
Like, this might be one that I have to pay to watch because, like, it literally could be one swing and Aaron Carter's Head sleeping comes off. for a month. They- <laughs> Celebrity death. Just rock, bro. <laughs> this dude's going to be crippled by the end of this. All right. Body. So this is what I want to add. Like, if we're going to be doing all these dumbass celebrity boxing matches and, they're, you know, people are going to be these stupid Instagram heroes that are thinking they're professional athletes now, no amateur career, just going straight to pro. Like let's I, I, let's Aaron Carter's not going straight to pro. <laughs> let's make let's this fun. Let's out. go Ellis Mania style. Like let's put dog collars on these people, you know, and like give the yeah, audience the shot collars. Yeah. Let's bring in chairs. Yeah, I want to see a picnic table Two. that someone's slamming. Mm-hmm. Dog collars on each yeah. fighter, and then give control- a six foot ladder that a guy can do a flip off of right give, into your chin. Give the controllers to the crowd, so like everyone just gets randomly shocked. These people in the middle of their fight. Like halfway or just through, let, <laughs> or just let Lamar do what he do best, and let him just slam some meth right before the thing, and just watch the guy be in, invincible. He's done a little meth. Okay, sorry, Lamar. How does I mean? Is he even in shape? Let's look at Lamar Odom. What's the, what, what? I mean, I think he's like still in decent shape. He's, dude, he's looking better than uh, than Aaron Carter. I'll tell you that much. Look at look how at this guy's body. Le- how old is he's forty one? Is he really? Yeah. He's older than I thought. Look at homie's body, dude. Look at Aaron Carter's body. Lamar doesn't look too bad. Oh, my gosh. He looks like the worms from Men in Black. <laughs> you know the ones that are always drinking coffee? That guy just looks like he just pounded some beer. <laughs> dude, he looks like he crushed a 36-pack of Miller High Lifes and then woke up and had a monster and then put boxing gloves on and those Nike compression shorts, and his muffin top is just rolling over those things. Well, this guy's trying to claim he's going to fight someone who's he's dad, almost a he's, whole foot taller he's than He's dad in this hard. That face tattoo is intimidating, though. Dude, do you see his arm? He has a keyboard down his arm. He has a piano on his he's arm. He's trying to channel that in Mike Tyson. <laughs> Mr. Michael, I love Michael. Mike Tyson used to beat the shit out of people, so I'm going to now. <laughs> I, don't know why the, I don't know why he's talking like that, but... Why is no one calling out Tyson? Let's bring Tyson to fight real, like, these Dude, celebrities. Dude, that guy... Well, no, because... Wasn't he supposed to fight? Well, he uh, did a fight recently. Oh, and yeah, then, with Holyfield. No, that hasn't happened yet. He fought, um, what was the last Tyson fight? Holyfield's supposed to fight him. They're right, spo- right, 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 right. That's yeah, what it was. It yeah, was, yeah. Um, dude, that it post fight was so funny. He was like, he's strong, man. He's, st- <laughs> he's still got it. He's you stood in there. <laughs> you stood in there. You took, like a, <laughs> you took those punches like a man. Like he low key was just telling me, beat the shit out yeah. of him, but like, good job for like not crying respect about it. I respect you, though. Yeah. I respect you, though. I beat the shit out of you, but thank you for standing in there. <laughs> you took it like a man. I beat the shit out of you. Yeah, who was that? Who did he just fight recently? I'm retarded. I forget, but that was Roy Jones. Roy Jones. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Roy Jones. <laughs> The Holyfield fight is going to be fantastic, though, if that goes through. Dude, Holyfield's, like, ripped still. Like, have you seen? He's still Bro, training. Tyson's still pretty balling, too. Like, that's what I'm saying. They're both, like, that would probably be a good both, fight. They're both straight units. Doesn't Holyfield live down here? He I lives know. in, like, Huntington or Venice or something like that. Does he? Yeah, I've been seeing him training on the beach. It's not, like, in person, but, like. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Holyfield? Yeah, big fan, dude. Big fan, buddy. Oh, dude, can't wait to see you fight Mark Tyson, dude. Pretty stuck. Oh, man. That one's... I, yeah, so, okay. I'm going to say I might pay for the Mike Tyson fight, and I'm definitely... There's it, fights going on tonight. I'm definitely... I don't care. There's not Aaron Carter fighting Lamar Odom, so I'm good. I don't need to see it. <laughs> I'm not even into pro fights anymore. I'm only... Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. Only- I'm not watching any professional fighting anymore. I'm only watching YouTube and whatever the hell you want to call Aaron Carter... Oh, like my YouTube God. stars and Aaron Carter. Isn't there like another one going on too with like, um, like Instagram, uh, like I don't want to use the word celebrity, but like famous Instagram people are fighting like TikTok people. No way. Yeah, I think so. Look oh, that one up awesome. too. this is awesome. Please tell me that's real. I think it's like a TikTok versus Instagram. Can we match. can we get in one of these boxing matches? I mean, if they pay money, I'll do one. I'm, I'll <laughs> I'll join this re- ridiculousness of want to be fighters and go in there and do this i think it i, I want to say i want to say that's what it was uh <laughs> i will do if someone wants to throw me like a million dollars you'll fight like yeah, one of these viral of the guys platforms oh it TikTok is tiktok stars are fighting oh it's youtube my bad tiktok stars are fighting youtube stars in a battle of the platform right. as influencer boxing becomes 
booming in the in this country. All right, so we have one viral video. Are we an influencer? We have one. We have <laughs> one. Like, can we get in this? I'll do it for like a fifty thousand dollar fight. Like, I'm, I don't even need a million dollar fight yet. Like, is there like tier levels? Because I'll jump in there. Right. Like, yo, we got twelve views. Uh, can I get the? You know, maybe uh, it's like a dollar a view. Be like, hey, my video has six hundred thousand views. I'll do a fight for six hundred thousand dollars. Like, I'm not. I'm not asking for that kid that reviews toys on YouTube. <laughs> Like I'm not, I'm not asking for that level, but I'm asking for like you know, the lo the lower level that like they, they put me up against little Jimmy. Like, yeah, oh little Timmy God. that reviews toys that gets six trillion fucking views. And, like we're not asking for that guy. Guys, I don't think this is legal. Like I, he knocked me out. That kid knocked me out. That kid has a mean right hook, dude. Believe it or not, Jesus, I had no idea where it was coming. He's southpaw. Dude, some of these kids on it on TikTok can fight. Dude, the, the father-son videos on TikTok I've been finding lately are pure gold. There are some, like, just father-son videos. That are the... You've been spending some time on TikTok. Oh, oh, my gosh. You sit in the hotel at night, and you're done studying. You need stuff to do. And you're just... Oh, yeah, because you didn't have uh, you didn't have. Um, oh, my gosh. Any, All right. any current channels in that sick throwback room you had. So we go up. Uh... We, uh, I'm staying up in the mountains, and I'm at a I'm at a mountain hotel up in California mountains. I'm not gonna drop names because it, it it wasn't a horrible place, but whoa, dude! I go into my You're room. Not I go names. into my Who room. Are you? You've I, changed, man. You've changed. You've always been name dropper. You've changed. I can't put bad reviews. I have to stay at this place often. You're changed, man. You're I, changed. I don't want them to like spit in my bed when I go back. Spit in your bed, yeah. As if that's a that's what they're gonna do. Spit in your bed. Poop in my bed closer anyways i stay at this hotel and it has like an old like 90s bubble tv in there the walls are like bright bright yellow the mattress i think like if i laid in the middle i was just laying on the floor but my the best my tv only played like early 2000s rom-coms that's all i had like no new movies oh, oh you, i had oh, guardians mean, of the galaxy one oh, night. you mean the bangers is oh, that what you mean bangers dude that's all I had. Like early, like I don't know how they even figured out how to get programming that only just played these movies. But I just had. I'm just sitting in my room every night with popcorn and wine, just crying. Like just take him back, just take him back. Can't you see he loves he you? He loves you. Oh my <sighs> god, they're gonna be friends after this. Is great. This is awesome. Oh, you, you know, you just uh, that overplaying movie like. You know, girl comes home from living away for a while, meets an old friend at a bar. During Christmas time, Wait. she gets stuck in the snow. <laughs> he he come, finds her. He come finds her in his old beat-up truck. He has to go somewhere, though, and she's mad that he's leaving. But at the end of the day, he comes back. But they were just friends for a little while. Yeah, but then they found out they really do love each other, and they're just so meant for each it's other. so romantic. God, it's man. so romantic. I'm going to write my own rom-com. <laughs> Devin's just gonna be the new producer of the Hallmark Channel. Yeah, for just ripping Hallmark <laughs> Hallmark movies. Just tear jerkers with bad acting. Wait, Devin, haven't you made this same movie like nine times? Yeah, but they're so good. I'm killing. They're fire. Yeah, I'm killing. Absolutely. I'm killing this. Uh, this. Do you think we could get in like a Hallmark movie? Because it's like C-list actors. Like it's all like corny C-list yeah. acting. Like I don't even think those people have sad I cards. Wanna, I don't even know if I want to like legitimately put my name on one of those movies because they're <laughs> that cringy. Like those those Hallmark movies are so pathetic. You probably make so much money because they play and people are obsessed. There are people that are obsessed. Yeah. Hey, what's the, what's it called when it when it plays and you get money? Uh, royalties. royalties. Dude, yeah. the royalties on those. Oh, you're you're set for life. You're good. Maybe we should look into getting the Hallmark movies. Right. Just another failure. Uh, rom rom coms. Rom coms. Yeah, I love it. We could do like we could do the Hallmark movie for like the rom com, and they're supposed to fall in love, but every single one at the end of the story, they never fall in love. They just end up fighting each other like <laughs> celebrity death match. We intertwine. Just it. hook them. Like get them in there and like hook them. Like oop, we got them. And then just, easy. They... There you go. We're gonna we're gonna star a TikTok kid and then a YouTube kid in the same movie, and they're gonna all go after the same girl. And then at the end of the day, it's, you know, a celebrity death match f fight. And then whoever wins actually gets the girl with a little bit of comedy in there. Why are you giving away? This was like our Canadian SEAL Team 6. We just give away all our good I know, ideas. I know. So don't steal, don't steal my Hallmark movie. I already trademarked it. And hey, by the way, I'm just looking at what's Tonic stuck play. in Bay. What is that ship that's stuck out in the Suez Canal on the outside? The thing looks like a straight spacecraft. What is that? It might be a spacecraft. That is not even a cargo ship. That's just like a big block of... <laughs> it's crazy looking. What is that thing? Oh, my God. Um, yeah, so that's uh, that's that's all I have all I have to talk about. I thought you had something else. 
I thought I had something else too. Oh, um, I'll just bring it up because everybody needs to know about it. Um, I'm a huge Formula One fan now. Dude, it's it's I, rad. I'm you. You guys might find me talking a lot about Formula One because I've. I'm a huge fan. If you haven't, go on Netflix, write meow. Right now. And, and go Drive to up, Survive. Uh, yeah, Formula One, Drive to Survive. Literally the coolest show I've ever seen. Formula One, coolest sport around right now. I will no say, argument. though, we talked about it because Formula One is rad. The the engineering, um, what goes into making a race team, the money that revolves around this sport, Bro. it's insane. These cars are rocket ships, but these guys are legitimate, the soccer players. Oh, they're the of the race world. They're the biggest prima donnas. Like if the <laughs> if they step on a rock that's on the track before they get in their car, they are not driving. They're dude. They're gonna call it, pack it up. They got a hangnail. Yeah, it's done. Like these guys are the biggest prima donnas. Every time something, if they if they're not winning, there's every excuse about how shitty the car is <laughs> after this poor <laughs> these poor manufacturers have dumped. A gazillion dollars. Their, yeah, I'm dropping their that entire market. company. They risked their entire company to build a car. Dude, they put millions of dollars into these cars, and this guy gets twenty third, and he's like, "This car is shit. The <laughs> tires no work. The steering, I cannot feel the brake pedal. It's it's bullshit." Could you imagine like going in a rental car with a Formula One driver and just driving around town with this guy and just <laughs> him cortiquing the car? Right. The steering is so loose. That car is absolutely. I cannot, I, cannot feel, <laughs> I cannot feel anything. These tires are shit. Acceleration horrible. <laughs> I need to box this lap. You need to change something. This car drives like shit. Well, it's a Ford Focus. So now there are a couple handful of drivers though in Formula One that are absolutely just. I mean, the Red Bull guys. Dude, yeah. Um, that Max Verstappen Sox, kid. Yeah. Who. He's an absolute scumbag, and he's a total asshole, but I love it because all he does is want to just fight people and win. The fact that Formula One drivers... Dude, he, like, like straight, like, pushes people. Like, someone, like, pushed him off the track, and while they were doing, like, the after weigh-in thing, bro, he's about to swing on this guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, I'm living for it. Dude. This, this guy's like, you overtook me in the fucking, in the seventh lap. I'm going to beat your ass. <laughs> I love it. I'm, I love I'm it. I'm living for it. And they just talk shit about each other the whole time. Like they're, I was telling you about those two guys that got into it. Yeah. And the guy's literally doing an interview, and the guy walks up and he's like, "Yeah, you're the uh, most dirty driver on the grid." And the guy looks over and he's like, "Suck my balls, mate." <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I fucking love it. I literally love it. Dude, you gotta figure like every Formula One driver is like 19 or 20 years old oh, though. Dude, they're just a bunch of kids with super fast cars and a huge paycheck. Like, and and they like they have such a power trip thing where they just like have to think they're the best all the time oh their ego is like, like they talk about it like if you're like kind of neck and neck with that with one of those dudes like walking towards the door oh he's he, going to race you to the door and he's like, gonna he's, put you into he's, he's gonna, gonna, gonna put beat you, you to yeah. the door like that's just the mentality that those guys have to we be couldn't in even there. we couldn't even get a formula one driver on our podcast because their ego wouldn't even fit in our studio i would love to talk to a formula one guy and just be like hey why are you such a bitch can we, <laughs> should we talk to Hawman and see if we can get him yeah see if we can get voltaire <laughs> Yeah, hey, hot man, hook us up, dude. Volteri's tight, though. Volteri's a badass. I like Volteri a ton. He's, yeah, the, so, he's a rad driver. I would be stoked. So when <laughs> we talked to Ha man about that situation where he met Volteri in the Maldives or wherever it was, like I didn't really understand that concept of who he was. And now after watching that show, that dude is legitimately a badass, drives for Mercedes, dude, the he's, pinnacle he, of F1. He would be like the – he's like the beef in golf. Like he's just a big, burly dude. dude. Like for a Formula driver, he's big. Yeah. Like he's a big guy. Yeah, dude, Formula 1 drivers are like jockeys. Like they're skinny they're little, little like – Because, dude, ounces matter. Like if you have <laughs> to – if you have pee in your bladder, like you're yeah. going to slow down in a lap. Yeah, no, it's it's pretty gnarly. But that's oh, why oh, I also love Go it. into that. What? So, you know, one of the guys I was flying recently, he was a gentleman driver and raced the Le Mans cars and stuff like that and did the GP stuff. But he was talking about, like, how one of the drivers they had on their team, because when you're racing these races, you're out there on the track for a while sometimes. Yeah, so especially you, you, those, yeah. like, 24-hour Le Mans. Mm -hmm. Like, you're out there for yeah, a minute, you could Yeah, be, you could be doing time on the track. And I guess he, every time he had to piss, he would just piss in a seat. So, like, every time you'd yeah, pit, and they and would... you'd have to sit in homies piss? <laughs> they would clean it out, but when he came in, he just... Pissing a seat. So in the middle of changing drivers and changing, because uh, like the Le Mans cars, 
they have different pads for different drivers. So yeah, because you have to be like they're, si- to, they're the, custom make everything. Yeah, for those guys so, to stay in place. So when you're doing a 24 hour race, you can't change the whole seat. So you just do inserts in these seats and rip them in and out. You just throw one out of the car and then throw the new one in and throw the driver in the car and strap them in and let them go. Oh, uh, so he's not technically sitting in homie's piss, but no, but the bottom is still his. Like uh, they're only like quarter seats. Yeah, dude, dude. and so they had to like. I, they would pull them out there to be pissed in the seat. And like, just had to wipe the seat out before they threw. But could you imagine on a pit stop now you're just cleaned and pissed in the middle of trying to get your lap? Like, seconds matter in these races, dude. Like, seconds. And yeah, you, like, guy's like sitting there. He's like, I'm not getting that fucking car until the pee's gone. <laughs> I'm not climbing in. I don't care if we're in first. That guy pissed in the seat. I'm not doing it. Like, I love that mentality of the race world. And then the fact that, like, these guys in Formula One come from go kart drivers. Dude, they literally are – oh, that's where the stupid simulator came from because we were talking about that. These dudes literally get picked up like out of go-karts and if they rip on a simulator. Yeah. Yeah. You, it's not like a- and then you put the guy behind the wheel of a multi-million dollar race car because he was good on a video game. Is that not the most absurd shit you've ever heard? And they're what, 800 horsepower in a Formula 1 car, right? I don't even know. They go 200 miles an hour, so – uh yeah, three liter, thousand horsepower. <laughs> One thousand. And what do they weigh? Um, because every single thing on them is carbon fiber. Uh, what's the weight of one of these things? You went from a one twenty five shifter car to a thousand horsepower, yeah, three point oh liter yeah, that you, revs out at ten thousand RPMs. Yeah, you went from this go kart does eighty to this thing goes two hundred in no time at all. Uh, seven hundred forty kilograms. So <laughs> six pounds. We're in America, Matt. What's the conversion here? Oh, Ricky Booby. So what? I, I I legit don't know the conversion there. Uh, it's sixteen hundred thirty-one pounds. Sixteen hundred pounds. And you have a thousand and horsepower. You have a thousand. Do you know what the power to weight ratio Bro, is? Oh, you're this? like almost looking at like. A one horsepower to one pound ratio. Like, I mean, obviously, I know that's it's, like it's like a one. Yeah, it, that's stupid things literally a rocket ship plus formula one like i think nascar sounds sick when you're at a nascar track and they're on the track and they're running like nascar sound pissed like meow, big VAs. Meow, meow. but formula one cars dude meow, 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 meow. Meow, meow. <laughs> boo, 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 I'm, s- I'm literally so sorry to anybody that's listening to this but dude formula one they're they sound sick on the track just dude they're, they're literally the coolest I'm gonna say they're the their coolest motor vehicle out D- there. Dude, they're sick. When I I got to go to that shop that builds Le Mans and some Formula, uh, they're like they're more like IndyCar and uh, Formula Two, Formula Three, and then Le Mans cars. But like yeah. when I was in, it's a lab. It's not a shop. This is a lab. Like you walk in there, everything's white. They have like fluorescent lights everywhere. Oh, yeah. They have to keep the shop at a certain temperature oh, all yeah. the time. But they are the cleanest, sickest. Like the engineering, you stare at this thing, and you're like. How does suspension work that's horizontal that's not even have a vertical drop in it? And you're like, oh, that's how that works. Yeah, you're like, oh, cool. These guys are smarter than I ever will be. Dude, it is, it's it's like fascinating. You could, do, you could do surgery on the floor of these places I, that build motors. I could have ate at the one I was at in Florida recently. Like legitimately. It's nuts. But that's also what happens when you have you know, $700 billion to make I think if we want. ever take off, we need to get into gentleman racing. We should do the Le Mans. <laughs> We might need to work our way up. I think we'll start out with the Lemons 24. I think I we'll think, rip the yeah. Honda Accord. Yes. I think we're I don't do even want to drive Formula One. I want to do that. Lemons instead. 24. Yeah. I think we should do it. Like maybe season's about to start, so maybe let's plan for like spring 22. You guys are going to see us race the Lemons 24. So the Lemons 24, your car has to have a value of five hundred dollars or less to race this race, and it's a 24 hour race. So there's some ways around this. Because people race Corvettes somehow. Basically, if they find out that your car is worth more than $500, they give you a $500 check and then crush your car. So you just don't want to go in there with something real nice that you're going to be afraid that you're going to lose. But I think... How are you driving a Corvette? People run like 1962 like off-model Corvettes and they say they got them for 500 bucks. You're such a lion. Come on. This happens in the Lemons. But... And it's Le Mans. It's L.A. Dash M O N S Le Mans. Le Mans. <laughs> so I think we should run this because there's like a class for us. I mean, these are the cars we're looking at generally racing out there. I 
I mean, love every that one with the wings on it. <laughs> sign me the fuck up right the now. The lemon. So yeah, like there's a, there's a Firebird right right there. That's a Firebird. That's a Porsche in the back right there. Dude. This is a Mini Cooper. Yeah, that Mini Cooper is horde. This is that a space shuttle. A spaceship on top of his car. <laughs> the giant Oreo. So I think we'll take the '98 Honda Accord and we're gonna rip it. We're going to rip the 98 Honda Accord. I'm so in. We could bash that thing. We are ris- racing, racing. We are racing. <laughs> I want full but you I want to- full communication like they do in Formula 1 because I want to hear you <laughs> talking the- to me on the track. Ah, oh, Devin, you're about to be overtaken. I'm going to be like, "These tires are shit." <laughs> well, it's a it's a Honda Accord, so yeah, yeah, you're right. They are shit. Our helmet comm system is going to be a bell quarter face with a walkie-talkie duct tape to with, the side of with, our with these speakers with these <laughs> headphones, headphones literally over <laughs> top of the helmet. And we're gonna have we're gonna have walkie talkies. Yeah. Yeah, that that's gonna be our communication. I love it, dude. I'm sign me these up. These breaks right are gun. They're good. Yeah, they're, well they were sixty two dollars this afternoon at AutoZone. Yeah, so. so I haven't changed those in three years. Wait, so you, oh my what? The upside down car? Mind fucking everybody on the track? Come on, dude. We are so doing this race. I'm in. But you have to create an accent that you only can talk in during the entire race. You have to have an accent. Only you. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Only Only you. Yeah, we hired a French driver. (laughs) Wait, that's Devin. We know he's not French. This is Devine. No, this is is Devon Jean. (laughs) Devon Jean. Devon Jean. Yeah, but because if you're French, if you're if you're French, you have to have two first names. That's yeah. like a well-known thing. Yeah, Jean Marc. Jean Marc, like yeah, yeah, you know. Jean Claude. Jean Van Damme. <laughs> Jean Claude Van Damme. So stay tuned because we're gonna do the Le Mans. Le Mans. If 24. we don't, I'm gonna be truly upset. I finally have a car because yeah, yeah, no, that's what I mean. Like I'm gonna be upset if we don't actually go through with this because we've talked it. about doing this in the past, but we never had a car to do it in. I have a car now that we got for free. I'm going to have to pass it through Kate where you might have to hire her as a driver. She, Kate might want to drive this. But she can race. Like, Kate can actually race. Dude, maybe we just get an old airplane. Oh, my God. Hold the phone. Speaking of that, Matt just showed me a picture of this stupid car that looks like an airplane. It is an airplane. <laughs> have you seen the one? It's a legitimate private jet with oh, wheels Lear on jet it. Oh, the Learjet limo? Yeah, it's a Learjet limo. It's been around forever. Like that, I, I, dude, I saw you that. You just saw that I, recently? The red one? It's yeah. like a candy apple red? Yeah, the thing's been around for like 15 years. That guy did that like 15, what? 20 years ago. Yeah. How am I just seeing this? I've noticed recently it's been going viral on the internet again, but that's like MySpace days. Like that's how really? old that is. That's how old that car is. Wow, I feel like a loser now. Yeah, it's a Learjet without any wings on it, and the guy put a 350 in the back. I mean, it's kind of cool, though. It's cool. It's a cool limo. Like, kind of sweet. Yeah, I mean, we could do something like that. Like, imagine pulling up in that thing. Like, people are laughing at you, but they're also like, ah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> like, you're kind of the joke, but you're like, ah, you know, they, they went for it. I'll give it to them. We, I mean, we could pull something off. It might not be as cool. We should do it with a 747. We should do, we should do one and just keep the wings on it, though. Let's do it with a 747. <laughs> yeah, a full massive airplane. <laughs> Can't get through the overpass. Yeah, it's going to be a little harder to get down the freeway. Dude, the best part about Kate, though, like, somehow she learned how to race sometime in her life growing up. And it's so funny because when she's dated guys and we've gone, like, go-kart racing at, like, uh, K1 and stuff like that. She whoops ass. Dude, she'll smoke her boyfriends in the race. <laughs> Sorry, bud. <laughs> like, she roasts them. Bro, if her. my girlfriend beat me at K1, I would – I mean, that would never happen, first off, because <laughs> – my girlfriend doesn't know how to go fast in a car. Uh, <laughs> she's so mad she's at you. She's about to punch me when she hears this. Devin might not have a girlfriend next episode. But <laughs> if Just she, kidding, Jane. If that she, was a joke. If she beat me in a go-kart race, I would legitimately throw the biggest fit, walk straight out. I don't even care if I have nine races left on my card. I'm walking out, and it's going to be the most quiet drive home. <laughs> Because I would be so pissed off. Shane is about to start going to K1 and get a season and she's pass right train, now. And she's uh, going to go train every single day for the uh, next four months and then invite you to go go-kart racing. Yeah. And you're going to walk in. Her, like, She's going to have like her face on the wall. Fastest time yeah, of the week. Plaques yeah. and stuff like that. She's going to have some, like, some stupid name on the board. Yeah, no no way. No way, no how is that happening. By the way, when you go to like K1 in one of these places, be wise about the name that you choose. Because that name sticks with you forever, by the way. What do you What do you mean? Like your 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 race name, right? Well, you can't change your race name. Well, what kind of race name did you use? I don't know what mine is anymore. You, mine was just my name. Mine wasn't. Nice. I don't know what it is right now, but it's something not. I thought it was funny the night I did it, and it's just not as funny anymore. 
<sighs> it might not be politically correct. I don't... Oh, God. <laughs> Here we go. It's Dr. Seuss, okay? <laughs> it was Mrs. Potato Head. <laughs> Dr. Seuss Potato Head. Oh, man. I would love to go into that one, but we're not. I'm, I'm going to steer clear, but I could just make fun of that for hours on end. That's... Yeah, we're not climbing into that oh, rabbit hole. Homie's got a Blackhawk. Careful when you say that. Blackhawk? <laughs> Dude. <laughs> I'm just going to say right now, we're canceling this episode. No, we're going to let this one play. So let's let's kind of go on something that we've never talked about. What are we at right now? Are we at an hour? Yeah. We should, we'll start winding this one out. Yeah, we'll but start what, wrapping her let's, up. Let's start talking about something really quick at the back side of this. It's something actually I've really thought about that I, I want to talk about more on here because I we don't tell our stories a lot and what we've done in life, but... What's a good failure? We never ask each other this. Like, what what's something that, like, we've struggled through? I mean, my life in general is a failure. Like, I legit am just, like, a walking failure. But Yeah, I, I don't know. I, every every day? Can I give you every day as an answer? <laughs> you, want, you want this morning? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I, <laughs> I forgot you at the airport one time. <laughs> one fucking time. What about the keys? Oh, come, dude. <laughs> See, this is what I mean. Every day. But, I mean, there's there's definitely been, like, serious moments in our life where, like, th- there's a part that we don't talk about. Like, there's things that you get so just down over because you want to give up. You want to quit. You want to just be like, you know what? This isn't worth it. I don't see my vision in this anymore. I don't see that that stronghold because we have this false falsification of social media that we can always are comparing ourselves to great, our peers. Great word, too. Love mm, it. Yeah. I think I just made that up. But we're always comparing ourselves to our peers, and we're always like, hey, I'm not where I should be at this point in my life, so what's the point of even doing this anymore? And I think it's like we just constantly get sidetracked, and we're trying to start these different paths so we can catch up. But if we would have just stuck to where we were at, we probably would have been doing just fine in life. So... I mean, I think that's a huge, like, fallback I I think I look at a lot with my life is there's – I think I've always, since, like, I graduated from high school, I was, like, this super sheltered, shy kid in high school that didn't talk, that just always walked around with a hoodie with my hood on and my head down. Like, I just – I wasn't that kid that was popular or had friends. Hey, but now look at him. He's wearing a stupid pineapple shirt with a beard being the loudest possible <laughs> idiot you could see on planet Earth. But I think there was just this point in my life that I realized, like, the world's not going to hurt me. And <laughs> <laughs> I can't – Oh, how wrong you are, man. And the sun's not going to hurt me anymore, but – where, like, I chased the adventure. So, like, no matter what I was doing in life, there was nothing that really got in front of me finding that fun, that joy, that adventure, something cool. I, like, that's probably why I haven't dated a lot of girls and so forth because I saw something and I went and got after it and I went to go have fun. And so whether it was traveling the world or whether it was, you know, working at camps and all these different facets, I just saw the instant gratification of fun that was involved in it. And I chased that for so long, and I didn't concentrate on making money, saving money, doing those things in life where <laughs> I just always thought it was I was having fun. You were having a great time. I had a blast. Looking back on some of the decisions you've made. Some of my financial choices in life. <laughs> that saving money aspect is looking pretty good right about now. It would have. Um, Maybe those helicopters to dinner weren't the best idea, huh? At the time, you know, you never thought it was going to go away. Who knew? Who knew? Who knew a pandemic would hit and you wouldn't do shit for a whole year? (laughs) Who knew? Yeah, get denied unemployment, get denied stimulus because you made too much the year before. Did not. Did not see see that that coming. coming. That one hit me like a blindside. But freight train. There's so many aspects of life where it's just like you go through it and you're just like, dude, this sucks. This is absolutely brutal. Like. Tiger King, I'm never going to financially recover from this, man. Like, you you get that point in your life, like, you just got your arm bitten off by a tiger, and you're like, I am not financially going to recover. First off, great analogy, my friend. Awesome. I have to go with something that the people are going to get. That was better than I've ever expected of you, and I'm I'm proud right now. I'm actually proud of you. Good job. But it's, it's this perspective, right? And, like, you're always having to change the lens on your own perspective and, like, seeing, like, dude, it doesn't matter what that person's doing with their life because we don't know what they're – what's going on there, right? It's just we have to see where we're happy at every single day. And the more that, like, I, I hang out with different people and the group that I surround myself with, like, that's really what keeps me grounded and keeps me motivated because 
I can be super down and not be stoked on what's going on in life and just be like, dude, how am I going to get out of this? But we, st- I start talking to buddies. And then and then you text me and I just put you further <laughs> into the ground yeah. when you're in a bad spot. Yeah, right. And uh, that's what Devin's here for. But then you're I have, welcome. I have other, you know, no, Devin's a part of this. Other buddies are a part of it. But you start meeting people and you just learn this leadership role and you learn this ownership role. And it's just a, it doesn't matter what's going on outside of your own life and what's going on outside your own circle. You just have to be content with where you're at. And that's hard. In today's generation where we only see the good and everything going on, yeah. no one talks about their failures. Yeah. And I mean, that's really a lot the show has to do about that. Like people don't talk about it. People it's a hard topic to talk about. That's why we like talking to people about it though, because it's like I'm inspired by failure. Yeah. Well you should be. You kinda have to be. I mean, if you if you're actually taking failure as and looking at it as a failure, I mean that it's hard to learn from something like that. So if you look at failure as like more of a learning like learning tool than actually getting down on it, I mean, that's where people obviously use that. I don't want to say as motivation, but kind of as motivation to be like, dude, I fucked that up. I learned from it. Let me do better. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, everybody only wants to improve themselves. Like, I mean, that's I mean, all everybody I- ever wants to do. And so when you fail, that's like an immediate like, oh, I'm definitely not improving on that. So that sucks. But if you're like that person that hits that wall and then is like, well, that sucked and live with that, like, obviously, you're not going to improve anything. Like, you I mean, have to you have to use that as a, as a as a learning tool and be like, OK, don't do that anymore because that fucking didn't work. Yeah. So and yeah, I mean, reinventing yourself is one of the hardest things that you could ever do in your life. It's easy for us to joke about it because that's just our personalities. But a lot of other people don't really get to see the the other side of it. Like we talk to people, you know, about all the stupid shit that they do and have to go through. You see that they have this cool company or this cool brand, whatever. But you didn't see them being those people too like damn dude we just hit a wall this company's not going anywhere this isn't doing anything this sucks what do we do but then they learn from it and now they are where they are so it's easy to turn around and be like oh my god you remember that one time yeah and it's like i mean we're in the middle of that right now with everything going on of course but i think i mean we're living through it but like that's also what this is is an outlet for us to just sit here and talk shit about how stupid we are all the time but I mean, thanks, hats off thanks to, for coming to my TED talk. <laughs> hats off to like the companies and our friends that are willing to come on our show to talk about this because like we just talked about a second ago, it's not easy for us to let for like people to see weakness in people. You don't want to show your weakness. We're not especially being a man, like masculinity. Yeah, mama ain't raised no bitch. You're, you're sorry. What, Is that not where we were headed? Your uncle called you a bitch. <laughs> This is a true story. I've watched Devin's <laughs> uncle call him a bitch. He's not, he's not or was kidding. it a pussy? No, he called me a pussy. That's even better. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, he said, I'm still a pussy. Yeah, sorry for the language, but that was a legit remark. But I, you know, quote it's, unquote. It's, sorry, you have to, you have to say it. But this part's true. Like, and it's, it's like stupid cliche and kind of stupid to put this one out there. But, but Machine Gun Kelly said it best in that one oh song. Oh my God, you are not using MGK as no, a reference. No, but think about it. Think about that lyric. And he said, because how are we supposed to know our dreams are possible if ain't nobody like, looks like us makes it? Uh, what, was that English? Yeah. It was a bazaar into the bathroom and makes Because how are we supposed to know My name that is our dreams Matt. are possible <laughs> if don't nobody that looks like us ever makes Did it? Did you Google the lyrics right now? Yeah. Are you good? Yeah, dude. Because I want to say the exact lyric, but That's it's dope. true because. Matt, Matt can spit bars. My name is Matt. <laughs> Can't get a date. But that, that part's true. And I think like a lot of old MGK stuff was like four kids coming out of situations was always inspirational because. It was someone that came from nothing that created something huge. and well, if, Right. Everybody loves to hear that story. Everyone wants the hero story. Yeah. But there's a side that we have to talk about how we became hey, that. Hey, but that hero went through some shit, though. Yeah. You know? That's why people love to see it, He though. talks about it a lot in a lot of his older songs. You know, he talked about, you know, getting hit by the car and all the stuff, living in basements and yeah, being yeah. homeless. I mean, it, you go through it, but are you going to give up when you're there? You might be down. But. I might. I'm ready to give up. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm over it. Mama raised one. <laughs> yeah, mama actually did raise a bitch. Thanks, mom. Appreciate it. Shout out. Yeah, shout out, mom, for raising a bitch. 
but I really think appreciate it, that's something that we could talk more about in more episodes is like really getting on that on even us with guests and like us talking about our failures with guests and seeing like their perspective on it and from our story because we have our own story too that's just as interesting as other people that we bring on the show that we don't really no i'm not that interesting honestly yeah. You talk about flying, and then I'm just like, you know, I'm sh- I'm overshadowed by that because it's like everyone's like, oh, Matt's a pilot, oh, cool. Yeah, it's and I'm not like, that cool. It's I'm really like, not that cool. At the end of the day, it's I'm just... like I ride a bike sometimes. <laughs> I don't know. That's all I got. But there's a lot of jobs that I would never have gotten in my life if I just gave up when someone told me no. There's like a there's like just this whole process that people think when that door is shut, that door's always shut. I mean, hey, you're kind of living it right now, man. Yeah. Like. You've been trying to get a job for ten years, with the fire service, and you kind of got it. Like, yeah. I'm, I mean, well, no, you, I mean, you did get it. Yeah, um, and there's yeah, still there's we, still room for progression. Though, can I, I can I say like it's official though? Like we're like you I, got the I job. It's only a finished training, but, okay. but I, I feel you, pretty good through you training. Definitely, yeah. almost got this. Yeah, and but yeah, ten years I've been applying to different aerial fire services, and year after year after year, never getting a phone call, never getting a chance and then finally hold on let me just write this in notes for a hallmark movie 10 years <laughs> trying to get same job finally gets it all right cool yeah, but you yeah. know i mean i i got to do a lot of other fun flying in this those 10 years i went all around the world i flew some really unique aircrafts i got hired with some fun companies i worked for some great owners my ultimate goal was always aerial firefighting like that's where i wanted but it was that whole perspective of when the door shut still be standing there 10 years later when they open the door again i mean you know, there's another friend. You know, you just always have to be standing there waiting hey, for that opportunity. Holy shit, Matt. You nailed it. All right. <laughs> Even if it takes 10 years, you stay at that door. Hey, suck it, Gary V. We got way more motivational quotes coming out of this one. <laughs> I mean, literally, don't stand there for 10 years outside that door. No, there, you there, stand there's there. There's a lot of other stuff no, you can be you doing in the right meantime. No, you stand right If you truly care <laughs> if you about truly something, care, you you'll camp sit behind that door. that door for 10 years if you have to before you, you get look that like, job. You look like Tom Hanks coming, right? coming off the island yeah. holding Wilson, eating, eating squirrels running by that door. Doesn't matter. <laughs> You bring a pocket full of beef sticks like Matt, and you stand in front of that door for 10 years if you have to. Eat every beef stick, every string cheese you need to get that job. Drink your own year. Wait. Motivational. Motivational. Thanks for coming to our motivational (laughs) TED Talk. Yeah. Sign me out. I'm done. (laughs) 10 years, it don't matter. Where's your story, though? What do you got? I don't know. I don't have anywhere. See, again, you just overshadowed me. I don't have a cool story where I've been trying to do something for 10 years. Well, so maybe, how do I top that? Maybe how you, do I top maybe that? Maybe you start today. How do I top that, though? Well, what's something you want to do? You can start I don't to- know because it's not anywhere near <laughs> cool enough to talk about now. Well, maybe I'm should, leaving, dude. I'm maybe done. Maybe you should just go be an astronaut. You know, Start today your astronaut training. All right. I mean, it's never too late, right? No, I'm going to be a Formula One driver. Cause Dude, I'm, I'm please. Pa- I'm passionate about it now. Hey, who's got a 125 shifter cart we can get Devin into? Nah, who's got a simulator I can drive? That's all you need to do. I'm about to come back from training in the middle of the month, and Devin's going to have a full simulator sitting in his house. Full simulator. I've adopted an accent. I cry about everything. <laughs> and I'm going to be a Formula One driver. Hey, if have you, a good night. If you guys, good talking if you guys, guys don't later. see Devin on Justin Our Failure podcast for the next 10 years. It's he's- because I'm in Monaco <laughs> ripping Formula One cars later. But did, well, that's a great movie. Thinking about that, did you ever see? Um, oh, we're not wrapping this up. We're we're keeping it going. This is the end of it. Uh, what is it? Racing in the rain. Uh, no, is that the one with the dog? Yeah, like the dog talks to him. Mm-hmm. It, yeah, the see, story you, you see the, the whole like dog talking to him thing. Kind of just. Or racing in the rain. That's what it's called. Uh, but that's a cool one because like his ultimate goal was to be a Formula One driver, and he finally at the end of the movie gets hired by Ferrari. But he goes through this whole. He gets hired by who? Ferrari. A Ferrari. Ferrari. Yeah, you have to say it like all those Italians. Yeah. A Ferrari. Dude, I think we should get you back in Supercross. Like, you ripped <laughs> last weekend at Dana's house. Like, I think we need to get you back on a it, bike. It literally took me four hours to hit a six-foot jump. So. Okay, so we put four yeah, hours. Give me, give, me, give, give, me some, me, give me some more time. I might Dude, be let's to. get you at A1 next year. Let's <laughs> just get you on a light and get you at A1 next yeah, year. Yeah, so if anybody could, uh, you know, float me a free dirt bike, that'd be cool. Hey, uh, PC, it, you know, yeah. if we can get, get them on a bike. Yeah, Mitch. Hey, Maybe man. we'll get you. Oh, all right, let's start with the Le Mans 24. I'm if, telling you, I'm going to be a race car driver. If you let's do go. good in the Le Mans, we'll get you into a bigger car. I will put the... We're going to have to slim you down. I'll put I'll put me on uh, my, my win in the Le Mans. Uh, on my lemons, 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 lem, lemons, 
Um, I'm going to put my win on the Lemans on my resume. That's going to be the only thing on there. And I'm going to go take that to Mercedes, Ferrari, McLaren. All Ferrari. The, all the, Ferrari. And uh, all the big boys at F1. And I'm just going to slide them that paperwork real slow. It's just going to have my name and first place Lemons. And a 98 Honda Accord. Yeah. <laughs> on stock tires. Yep. And stock brakes. And I'm going to be like, what do you want to do? With two 12s in the trunk bumping. And I'm going to tell them, I... I, I like speed. I'll, I'll go, I go fast. I hope we can get Devin like in NASCAR or Formula One. Just I want to go fast. And Lewis Hamilton is going to lose his seat because I'm hopping in that thing. I mean, you're not too old. The guy, you're a little older than the average driver. The average bear. But I think we can get you in there. This might be a good comeback no, story. I'm, I'm, I'm in already. All right. If anyone has a 250 shifter cart. Wait, hold on. And we can get Devin. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, hel- yeah, hello. Is that Enzo? Oh, uh, is yeah, no, I got to go. Ferrari's calling me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks for joining us. Uh, I just got a Ferrari deal. I'll never talk to you guys ever again. Late. So this is Justin Under Failure's first sponsorship, Devin and Formula One. Yeah, have a good one. <laughs> I no, think that's a rad goal. I mean, you need a goal. You, you, yeah, Formula you, One's totally plausible for me. It really is. <laughs> we, can, we, can, we can make some calls. All right, let's make it happen. All right. Well, we'll get we'll get more into that. We're next gonna time, we're but. gonna get Devin next time. We're gonna get him to talk about his goals. I'm gonna let him go home and think about his goals. I'm yeah. gonna give him some homework to think about his goals and failures and think about what he did on this episode today. <laughs> Not showing up. What? Oh, well, that was rough. That was oh, rude. I'm come sorry, on, dude. No, you're you're here. I'm gonna motivate you, bud. All right. I, I try. All right. I'm gonna That's motivate all that matters. you. If you haven't noticed, Devin's sweet shorts. He's about to go out on a yacht right now, and with the salmon shorts and his. Is there, it, I wear them because they match my skin tone. <laughs> I'm just pink. So I wear pink shorts, so it just they match. Dude, yeah, fuck you. I hope, I'm I, I, I I'm hope you guys here. liked our episode today. We'll be back I next know. week, maybe with a guest. It might be just us again. <laughs> Sorry you had to listen to this or any other episode. Hey, you might have been motivated, us. though, you know, yeah, honestly. Matt's TED Talk was dope. You guys should definitely be motivated by that. There's more stuff that I want to start bringing on the podcast that I – why you you know when I'm in hotels I usually just get bored and I just write forever so maybe next time we'll bring some new stuff onto the on the series 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 series, series. Man, the all right all right buddy um thanks for watching guys we do appreciate it and shout out Heat Wave Canada Dips Muertos Coffee thirty seconds out and London Boat Rentals for Rockwell our watches six spot and uh, Rockwell yeah. and London Boat Rentals yeah, dude I got it. you guys need a Duffy this summer. Head down to London Boat Rentals oh, in Long Beach. Going for the ad Check them out. Good. Nope, that's all. All right, all. All right well, uh, we'll see you guys next week. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. Or listening. <laughs> Bye.